So as you can see, we are given two sets of data. And in the two sets of data that we are given, we are told the two small companies, Lite Fit Fitters, um, a cupboard making company, and Mango Computec, a computer company, compared the number of days um, sick leave taken by the employees of their respective companies in 2008. So we can see, guys, that we've got two different companies that we are talking about. It's this company, Lite, Com Fit Lite Fitters, and then we've got Mango Computec. Okay, I've just covered that, and that is not okay. Um, I won't cover it. So there it is. Both companies have employed 12 workers. And then we've got the following number of sick days. So it's 12 workers. And basically how you would interpret something like this. One worker took one sick leave day. One worker took two sick leave days. One worker took three, another three, another eight, another eight. And if you look at this data, guys, this data has already been arranged. And the reason why your data needs to always be arranged is so that you can answer certain questions because there are certain questions that you cannot answer if your data is not arranged properly. Let's look at the first question. It is written here. It says to us, determine the modal number of days sick leave taken by the employees of Lita Fittles. Okay, so I always, always, always say, if you guys have been watching Math Literacy, you will know, okay, that there are certain terms that always repeat themselves when it comes to um, data handling. Mode, mean, range, you know, um, those are the type of things that you always need to be aware of. You cannot walk into a mass literacy exam and you do not know what the range is. You don't know what the mode is. Average, mean, um, what a ratio is. You can't walk into an exam. You're doing yourself a very huge injustice in terms of that. Let's look at this. We are being asked for the modal. Modal is the same as mode. It's just a different word for mode. So whenever we are being asked for the modal, we are actually being asked for the mode. Mode is the number that occurs the most compared to the other numbers. So if I've got 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 3 is going to be my mode or my modal number. Why is 3 my modal number? Because it occurred way more than all the other numbers. Let's go see in terms um, of Lita Fitters which one occurs the most. So if we look at our data here, guys, we've got 3 that is occurring 2 times. We've got eight occurring two times. Um, oh, sorry, eight occurs four times. You see, nice one already. I'm picking up something over there. Eight is occurring four times. So nine, two, ten, two. Automatically, eight becomes my modal number. And I'm going to go and write it at the bottom there. 4.1.1 modal. You don't have to write what I'm writing right now. It's going to be eight. Eight um, sick leave days is going to be your model. Let's go up. Determine the range of the number of days sick leave taken by the employees. The moment you hear the word range, you know it's going to be the biggest number minus the smallest number. And be careful because you can see they're changing around. This time it's for Mango Computec. Okay? So range is equals to max, maximum number, ne? maximum number minus minimum number. Maximum number for Computec, Mango Computec, is 10. The smallest number is zero. So we have to use it as it is. Because zero is the number. There we go. And because there's no... Um, unit of measurement. It's not 10 centimeters, 10 millimeters. If that were the case, we were supposed to write the unit of measurement. So now it's just the, the sick leave days. 4.1.3. Determine the median number of sick days from the Mango Computec Company. So in this particular case, Median is the most middle number. A lot of learners get confused between the median and the mean. Don't do that to yourself. Median, it almost says to itself, middle, you know. 
Um, and then let's go back to see what the median in this particular case is. There's, there's, there's a number of ways that you can find the median that I've also seen learners doing as well. Some learners um, will cancel. They'll do this. They'll cancel here, cancel here. You see what I'm doing? I'm canceling um, going backwards to see which number is left in the middle. Now look at this, guys. I have two numbers that are left four and five in the middle. So because there's two numbers and it's not one number, if it was one number, I would have written the number as it is. But because it's two numbers, I literally have to add the two numbers, which is four and five. And if I've got two of them, I need to add them and divide them by two. You can only have one number. So it's going to be, I hope that the calculator is visible. It's going to be 5 plus 4 divided by 2, and it's going to give me 4.5, which is 4.5. So my median is 4.5, okay? So that's going to be my median. Okay, let's go now and go to the next question. The next question says to us, calculate the mean average. Mean is the same as average, number of days sick leave, for the employees of Mango Computech. Round the answer off to the nearest whole number. We're doing two things over here, guys. We're calculating the mean and we're also rounding off. Again, a lot of learners like ignoring this. If you are asked to round something off, it means you're getting a mark for rounding it off. So again, we're working with Mango Computech. Let's go now and add all of those numbers together because we are looking for the mean. Whenever you're looking for the mean of something, you add all the numbers together and you divide it by the number of numbers that exist. So in this case, it's going to be 0 plus 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 8 plus 10. How many numbers do we have? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Do we have 13 numbers? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So because we've got 12 numbers, we have to divide by 12. So you add the numbers and you divide by the number of numbers that exist there. Let's go now and use our calculator to add all of that together. Again, don't use a calculator for the first time in the exam because you are going to be in trouble. I'm not going to add the zeros because I already know what that means. So I'm going to say 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 8 because it's 8 twice plus 9. Oh, there is no 9. Plus 10. First press equal, and then divided by 12. So that's going to give you 6 and 3 quarters, which is going to probably be 6, yes, 0.75. So it's 6.75, and now we've got that, okay? Can you see how I have been flowing? I have literally, guys, all I've been doing is flowing, because I know what a mean is, I know what a range is, I know what a median is, I know what a mode is. That's the type of stuff you need to go into the exam and not panic about. You cannot be panicking about a mode, an entire mode, guys. No. The next question says to us, what is the range in simplified form? Oh, sorry. Now I'm remembering. In the previous one, they said to me, I need to round it off to the nearest whole number. Anytime you round something off to the nearest whole number, it means there must not be a comma in it. Let's go round it off quickly before we do the next one. So I'm going to round that off. This number here is going to determine what happens to that whole number over there. Because it's bigger than 5, it's 5 and greater. If it was 4 and below, it would have been 6. But because it's, it's greater than 5, it's going to be 7. There, I've rounded that off. I've gotten all my marks, okay? Now we can go to the next question. So the next question says, what is the ratio in simplified form? 
Anytime you are given um, a question where you are asked for the ratio, always, always, always leave it in simplified form, even if they haven't asked you guys. Because the, the mistake that we make is that we, when something is, is given to us, we want to just leave it as it is. Then we lose marks for not leaving it in simplified form. So it says to us here, um, of the employees of Little Fitters um, who took less than four days sick leave to the employees who took more than four days. Always write it in the order that it's given in. In this particular case, the order that it is given in is the number of people who took less than four to the number of people who took more than four. Let's go look at that number over there. So the number of people um, in this particular case who took less than four is going to be here. I don't want to hide the numbers, even though it's looking a bit dodge. And then the rest of the people are the number who took more than four days. So what I'm going to do is count. And if I count that, it's going to be one, two, three, four people took less than four days. So four people is two. And whenever you write a ratio, you mustn't write the unit of measurement, okay? Um, so now I'm scrapping out that because I've already used those numbers. Four people is to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Four is to eight people. That's the ratio, but that ratio is not simplified. If I want to simplify my ratio, I look at both numbers and then I think of a number that can go into both numbers without leaving a remainder. Okay? So in this particular case, I can automatically see that four can go into both numbers. Four goes into four ones. So I divide this side by four. I divide this side by four. Four goes into four ones. Four goes into eight twice. So my simplified ratio is one is to two.